Snipers, snow troopers, steel brigades swarm. Series 4 is stacked with new versions of popular Action Force characters, new figures that give you the opportunity to venture into the Arctic, and more head than you can get in a Vegas back alley with a crisp $20 bill. Valiverse has delivered yet again. The last time you're gonna see a bad guy like this again, let me tell you. In this video, I'm gonna recruit all of these new troopers into the ranks and thoroughly inspect all of their weapons and gear. And since we never made a dedicated video for Action Force Series 3.1, we'll loop all of those items into this video as well. So strap yourselves in, because it's time for action. Action Force Series 4 includes three carded action figures, a new Arctic Trooper with two different gear sets and an Arctic themed weapons pack, the hugely popular Tactical Gearhead pack, a Deluxe Swarm Trooper, and the Deluxe Blowback Sniper, who is so well camouflaged that I can't even find him. G'day Sheilas, Toy Hunter Tony here, often called Toy Hunter Guru, Crocmaster Prime, and I'm here to establish timelines and hunt for toys. As with all Bonza toy hunting videos, we're starting in the car, because I've just made the perilous half mile journey from Robbo's joint to the bloody shops. Today we're going to be hitting a few different bloody stores. Oh shit. Oh crikey, I might edit that out or I might just not bloody bother. Today we're on the hunt for that bloody new Valiverse Action Force Deluxe Blowback Sniper. And this is going to be a very treacherous expedition. So don't forget to put on your sunscreen, grab your croc repellent and follow me. Before we get into Series 4, I want to take a moment to discuss the Deluxe Swarm Horde figure. This was the Valiverse exclusive item for last year's PowerCon convention, and the first Swarm figure to come packed in with all the unique accessories that were first made available with the Series 1 Swarm gear pack. Sure, the BotCon exclusive Wasp Raider did come with the flight pack, but he was missing the iconic energy shield, which has now been produced in a glorious red translucent plastic and included with the Swarm Horde. This figure also features a brand new, very menacing head sculpt. PowerCon's roots are firmly planted in the Masters of the Universe fandom, and this was clearly a big influence on the design of the figure. Firstly with the name, the Swarm Horde, which sounds really cool and pays tribute to the evil Horde faction of He-Man villains. Secondly, the figure's colour scheme is copied directly from Mattel's Hordak action figure that was released back in 1985. While we're on the subject of the Swarm, let's kick off Series 4 with a look at the new Deluxe Swarm Tracer. Desert Rat to base. I've got movement on the perimeter, over. I'm not sure. I've never seen anything like this before, over. It looks like... like kryptonite darting across the sky. Yes, that's right, Superman's kryptonite. Yes, I know Superman isn't bloody real. I'm just reporting on what I can see, okay? Send reinforcements to my position. Desert Rat out. Oh, for fuck's sake. The Swarm Tracer comes with all the same equipment as the Swarm Horde Deluxe release, as well as all three of the different Swarm Head sculpts that we've received so far, which I call the Swarm Head, the Scarab Head, and the Horde Head. Yet what makes this release so unique among all the previous versions of the Swarm is that the Tracer glows in the dark. The character name is inspired by Tracer Ammunition, which are rounds that are built with a small pyrotechnic charge in their base. When fired, the pyrotechnic composition is ignited by the burning powder, which burns very brightly, making the projectile's trajectory highly visible to the naked eye. Back in December 2023, I shared my thoughts on this figure in a Patreon-exclusive video. I'm not as excited about the Swarm Tracer as a lot of other people. I'm not a huge fan of Glow in the Dark. But now that I have the Swarm Tracer in hand, I just can't stop playing with it. This toy makes me feel like a little kid again, every time I turn the lights out to check out the awesome glow of this figure, which is super bright. While some of you may consider this to be nothing more than a gimmick used to sell another version of a figure we've already received, I'm not going to complain when the end result is this much fun. One of the most popular new Action Force Series 4 items is the Tactical Headgear Pack. And for the bargain price of $20, you get 10 alternate heads that you can use to customise your Action Force figures. There are five new ski mask heads with goggles and five new gas mask heads, and each type is produced in five different colour schemes. Black for the Spec Ops Trooper, Desert Tan, Green for the Delta Troopers, Grey and Purple for the Garrison Cavalry, and finally Blue for the Riot Troopers. 
These masks are absolutely stellar and come attached to a helmeted head that has tons of detail such as Peltor ear defense, a battery pack and a side mounted flashlight. Featuring a clear lens through which you can see the whites of their eyes, these new Valiverse heads make the gas mask that came with the G.I. Joe classified Big Ben look positively amateur in comparison. All these gas masks come fitted with two filter canisters and each one is removable to suit either a left or right handed shooter. As you can see in this image here, I fire my rifle right handed, so I only wore a filter on the left side to make it easier for me to look down the sights of my rifle while wearing a gas mask. The new Desert Steel Brigade offers us another edition of this hugely popular Action Force character. And he comes equipped with all the accessories we've come to expect, although Valiverse have switched out his primary weapon system for a tanned version of the Scar Assault Rifle with Underslung Grenade Launcher that was first issued to Duster back in Series 2. With the original Steel Brigade, the Nightop Steel Brigade, the Goldhead re-release version, the Steel Brigade gear set, the Series 3 female, and now this Desert Ops edition, the Steel Brigade is giving the Swarm a run for their money in terms of repaints. But when they look this cool, I say give us more. And Valiverse is doing exactly that with their Big Bad Toy Store exclusive, Arctic Steel Brigade. With the release of the Urban Commando, all three of the original Series 1 troop builders have finally been reissued due to popular demand. Valiverse Action Force Troopers and their gear packs are typically sold separately, yet for this Series 4 reissue of the Urban Trooper, we get the figure and all his weapons and equipment supplied as a complete carded figure. Now named the Urban Commando, you'll definitely want to add this figure to your Action Force ranks, even if you already have the Series 1 Urban Trooper, because this is the only way to get that new gas mask head fitted with a red translucent lens. The Urban Trooper was easily my favourite of the first three Action Force troop builders due to his awesome two-tone grey urban camouflage, so it's fantastic that collectors are getting another opportunity to add these figures to their collections with the Series 4 Urban Commando. Alright you flaming galahs, we're heading into bloody Kmart and it's really important when you're toy hunting that you don't startle your bloody prey, so you have to take it very slow when stalking around the aisles. Crikey, look at all these. Throw another turtle on the Barbie cobber. And what have we got here? Bloody elephants. Did you know that baby elephants are born weighing 250 pounds? That makes them the biggest babies in the world. Well, except for Valiverse haters. Holy smokes, look at this. A Lego camera invented by Boog. Well, it looks like we got Buckley's chance of finding the blowback bloody sniper here. And since I need to go to the dunny, Let's blow the froth off a couple and head to another joint. Now we get to my most anticipated new releases, and I've been excited to add these troopers to the ranks ever since Valiverse first teased that winter is coming. The Arctic troopers have finally given Action Force the capability of conducting missions in a snow-covered environment. These figures all come with the usual alternate mast heads, so that your troopers can be either Caucasian or dark-skinned. Yet these are the first Valiverse army builders to also come with a third alternate head in the form of the new ski mask which has a really cool looking pair of gold lens goggles incorporated into the sculpt. The arctic gear pack comes with a suitably coloured plate carrier and helmet while the highlight of this set for me has to be this newly sculpted SCAR assault rifle. Beyond this though the reason I was most excited to get the arctic gear was so that I could create a custom arctic rat. So humour me for a moment while I tell a few tales of my time in the service. When I was in the British Special Forces, I was trained to operate in the harshest terrain on Earth, from the jungle, to the desert, to the Arctic. I found the jungle to be the most challenging, both physically and emotionally, and it was in the desert that I first experienced warfare, yet by far the most personally rewarding training I ever received was in cold weather warfare. During the course we were trained in telemark skiing, Arctic survival and a whole host of cold weather patrolling tactics and I used an assortment of parts and pieces from the Action Force Arctic Troopers to build this custom figure. Firstly you'll notice that I did not issue Desert Rat with the plate carrier from the Arctic gear set. This is because I used a British DPM camouflage assault vest during my training so for this custom I stuck with the body armour that Valiverse issued to Desert Rat during Series 2. While you'd think that soldiers would always wear white camouflage gear in the Arctic, this is often not the case, especially when they are required to deploy quickly and all they have with them is their standard issue kit. However, this does break up the look of the all white uniform and can often improve a trooper's overall camouflage. In addition, I gave this trooper the white backpack because even though I carried a standard issue British Bergen on this course, we used white fabric covers to help camouflage them in the snow. 
I also fabricated an elastic sling and attached it to the M4 rifle. As you can see, Desert Rat is carrying this weapon system slung around his neck, and this is the best way to sling a rifle while skiing, as both your hands need to be free to use ski poles. Carrying a rifle slung around your neck like this becomes very uncomfortable very quickly, but it's impossible to move on skis without using ski poles, and when it comes to Arctic operations, comfort is for pussies. This position also allows for the fastest transition between skiing and shooting, which is something that is practiced extensively in the Special Forces. Unfortunately, Valiverse is yet to offer us skis and ski pole accessories for these troops, so I had to take these pieces of equipment from the G.I. Joe Classified Series snow job. The problem is, these aren't the correct type of skis to use on military operations. The military use Telemark skis that have a distinctive upturned tip at the point of the ski, and are fitted with specially designed bindings that fix only to the toe of the ski, thereby creating the free heel. Crucially, this allows the skier to walk, making them a more practical method of transportation when it comes to navigating Arctic terrain. So while these G.I. Joe issues skis and ski poles will have to do for now, I really want Valiverse to create a skiing equipment accessory set for these troopers, because designer Bobby Valor will do his research and will actually create the correct type of Telemark skis. Bobby's also smart enough to realise that the military use white coloured skis, so that they are camouflaged against the snow. I mean shit, even the original snow job from 1983 had white skis. But these guys are yet to figure out that snow is white. You two are just dumber than a bag of hammers. Representing the first dedicated sniper in the range, we have the deluxe blowback. The base figure is offered here with an intricately detailed three-tone camouflage colour scheme and three different heads. Blowback has camo face paint applied to his face and we get one head with both eyes open, another with one eye closed to simulate him looking through his rifle's optics, and a third mast head that you can use to create a completely different character. Blowback is equipped with a plate carrier, a gun belt and a helmet, and armed with an assault rifle fitted with an optic and a bolt action sniper rifle that is a brand new addition to the range. This sniper rifle is supplied in an opening pelican case, which also includes a spotter scope and stand. The legendary exploits of military snipers have fascinated us for many years and have been the focal point of many Hollywood movies. Most recently in films like American Sniper and the Mark Wahlberg actioner Shooter. Yet the sniper's signature ghillie suit first entered our pop culture lexicon thanks to 90s movies such as Tom Berenger's Sniper and the Jack Ryan adventure Clear and Present Danger. This familiarity with Flans makes the blowback sniper the perfect addition to the Action Force range and Valiverse welcomed the challenging task of producing a 1-12 to scale ghillie suit for this deluxe trooper. A ghillie suit is a type of camouflage clothing designed to resemble the background environment, such as foliage, snow or sand. Typically, the ghillie suit is a net or cloth garment covered in loose strips of hessian, cloth or twine, sometimes made to look like leaves and twigs, and optionally augmented with scraps of foliage from the area. Put some thought into this, Jones. Thank you, Captain. Uh, Mrs. Fox lent it me from last year's production of Robin Hood. The Valiverse version of the ghillie suit is attached to the figure with a series of elastic straps. And while you can fit the suit over the body armour, better fitment is achieved on a figure who is not wearing the plate carrier. Most sniper teams operate in pairs, with a sniper and a spotter, so I highly recommend picking up at least two of these figures. You can have blowback as the primary sniper with the bolt action rifle, and then use the masthead to create the spotter, who can be armed with the assault rifle and equipped with a spotter scope. Personally, I would have preferred it if these figures came equipped with webbing instead of a plate carrier, and a backpack also would have been a welcome addition. But when you've been collecting Valiverse Action Force as long as I have, you can easily make these changes using equipment from your spare parts bin. Valiverse have also recolored the sniper rifle in ghillie suit to offer us the Arctic Sniper gear set. And when you include this with the Arctic Troopers and the Arctic Steel Brigade, you can quickly assemble a cold weather warfare squad. All right, you flaming drongos, we're at toy, mate. And let's have a Captain Cook in here, eh? Bloody bonza. Crikey, mate, look at this, Sheila. That head sculpt looks like a bag of smashed bloody crabs. What dickhead designed this? Over here in the Star Wars section, we got Mandos, Landos and bloody Randos. Jingo by Jingo by bloody crikey. Fuck me swinging. Look at all these rip snorters. Eternals was defo the right name for this line. Eternally on fucking clearance. Well, it don't look like I'm going to find the bloody blowback in here either. I might have to rethink this bloody toy hunting strategy. The final figure to be released as part of Series 4 is Desert Condor, 
but I want to save the best for last. So instead, let's take a look at the MailAway exclusive Covert Condor that I'm yet to cover in any detail on this channel. The concept of a MailAway exclusive is something that toy companies haven't offered since the 1990s, and the whole idea evokes strong memories of the golden age of action figure collecting in the 1980s. A lot of Joe Bro dipshits have accused Valiverse of ganking this figure's design from that of the G.I. Joe character Chuckles, when in reality the figure was inspired by Daniel Craig's first appearance as James Bond in Casino Royale. The influence behind Chuckles is Tom Selleck and Magnum P.I. Action Force Series 3.1 introduced us to the new female hero character of Gemini, who has a snarling face sculpt and pigtails in her hair. This is also the first figure to come equipped with the female version of the plate carrier that has pouches at the front for carrying two spare rifle magazines. According to her file card, this character is quiet and reserved, but flips the switch when placed in stressful situations, with this trait ultimately gaining her the code name Gemini. Series 3.1 also offers us three new female gear sets, three weapons packs, and three upgrade sets for existing female characters. As has become tradition with the Modern Action Force line, the three new gear sets allow you to equip and customise your female troop builders, while the new weapons packs offer some fantastic additions to the Action Force armoury. Weapons Pack Echo introduces us to the FN Evolus light machine gun, while Weapons Pack Foxtrot includes the legendary Barrett 50 caliber sniper rifle. And finally, Weapons Pack Golf gives us the highly anticipated minigun. The Evolus comes with a removable box magazine for carrying linked rounds and two bipods, one for the collapsed position and an alternate bipod for firing from the prone position. The Barrett 50 cal makes for a perfect alternate weapon system for the blowback sniper and features a stunning concussive blast effect. Movie fans have loved the minigun ever since Jesse Ventura brandished Old Painless in the 1987 action classic Predator. I ain't got time to bleed. And even though the idea of this being a hand-fired machine gun is utterly ridiculous, there's no denying it looks super cool in the hands of Trigger. Featuring a drum magazine, six rotating barrels, and a plug-in effect to simulate a stream of ejected empty casings, this is sure to be a fan-favourite weapon that I hope one day can be mounted to the turret of the upcoming Valiverse vehicle, the Vanguard. An important point to note about the Vanguard is that pre-orders close on the 31st of March 2024. And that's in just a few days' time, so if you don't want to miss out on this epic 112 scaled armoured beast that isn't crowdfunded, then head over to the Valiverse.com website and place your order today. Top, middle and bottom, all included. The three upgrade gear packs afford us alternate face sculpts of some popular Action Force females, including screaming heads for Eclipse and Kill Switch, and a lip-licking alternate head for Pandora. I love the colour of Pandora's machine gun included here, which is also perfectly suited for use by the Swarm Horde. Some other highlights featured in these Series 3.1 accessory packs are the introduction of smoke effects and open breech pistols that expand your storytelling options when posing your figures, and the inclusion of two versions of the Italian-made STF-12 tactical shotgun. These comes with a rack of side-mounted shells produced in both red and green, and they can be switched out to give your weapons more colour options. In fact, I enjoyed this tactical shotgun so much that I grabbed a black version and a new gas mask head and used them to create an SAS breacher, and I'm really happy with the results. Finally, we get to Desert Condor, and I think this is the best figure in all of Series 4, but I'm probably a little biased since this character means so much to me personally. This figure represents a version of Condor from a time before he joined Action Force, when he was still serving with the British SAS, and was heavily inspired by the story depicted in issue 8 of Action Force Mission Files. When Action Force designer Bobby Valor and I were fleshing out the backstory of Desert Rat, a lot of careful consideration was given to the relationship between Desert Rat and Condor, and in my mind there's a good friend that I served with in Iraq, who represents the real world version of this fictional character. He even has the same hairstyle. Some time ago, Bobby very graciously sent me the original Paintmaster prototype of Condor from the first Kickstarter, when the character was dressed in black. So now I have four different versions of Action Force's main character, and they all hold very special places in my collection. I'm proud to say that Bobby gave me the honour of writing Desert Condor's file card, and the resulting text is a melding of the real and the fictional keeping the story firmly rooted in the Action Force universe, yet sprinkling in enough elements to give it a level of authenticity, not often seen in other toy lines. 
Bobby, I want to thank you for making this figure and doing such a stellar job. Even though you had no idea that at the time, in my mind, you were once again representing a real world hero in such an incredible way. This figure now takes pride of place in my collection alongside Duster and Desert Rat. The ranks of the Action Force Desert Patrol are growing, with Desert Rat, the Desert Trooper, the Female Desert Trooper, the Desert Steel Brigade, and Desert Condor. All we need now is that glorious tan version of the Vanguard to complete our long range desert mission. And to my friend that this action figure represents, you know who you are and you know I love you man. Stay safe out there. Toy Hunter Guru, Crockmaster Prime here, and we came up bloody stumps, eh? This Toy Hunter and Lark ain't all it's cracked up to be. Maybe I'm bowling this spinner from the wrong bloody angle. I mean, if I walk into the shops and I buy a kilo of bacon, I ain't hunting fucking pigs, am I? A little food for thought for all you little rip snorters out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later.